Full stack is hard. We wanna make it easier. And with the massive new release that I'm about to talk about, full stack just got way easier than it's ever been before. What are we here to talk about? TRPC V10, let's chat. So what's so special about TRPC V10? Well, honestly, V10 is not a fair name. This should be V2. This is the first true 2.0 massive overhaul release of TRPC. Breaks everything, it changes everything and it makes our experiences as full stack developers better than they've ever been before. If you're working on a full stack application where the front end and the back end are made by the same team and both can be TypeScript, you're probably messing up if you're not using TRPC. I know that's a bold statement, but it's we're at that point now. GraphQL is great as soon as you have different teams working on those things and multiple clients that are consuming them. And then REST is great once you have external consumers from other companies. What we're here to talk about is how to move as fast as possible without breaking stuff in your full stack application that you and or your team are working on. So what changed? Well, two big changes combined with one really nice tool to help you move over. That's what we're here to talk about. Big change number one we no longer define things through a route syntax where we chain queries. The chaining syntax made my little functional programmer brain all nice and happy, and I certainly enjoyed it. But if we look at some of the old syntax, I will show an example of a V9 router where we create the dot router and then we chain dot query calls on it. This had a few problems. The big two were the inference system was chaotic because it was chaining all of these queries and mutations. The other thing was the TypeScript performance was crap because it was chaining all of these things. So if your goal was to have a giant TRPC code base, this was kind of fighting with us and it made some of the magic they wanted to have like go to definition a lot harder. With V10, things are a little different. A router now takes in an object and this object has keys that are either other routers or are procedures. A procedure is a thing you define externally or internally in line here. And this router has a query on it, user by ID, which is a procedure with an input that we don't know the value of. We check if it's a string. If it is, we return it. Otherwise we throw an error because it wasn't a string. And now when we have this query, we are certain that the input is a string because we validated that here and we threw an error if it wasn't. This makes much more composable procedural design of your APIs way simpler. But the magic that this enables in your developer experience is really what I'm here to show off. So we're gonna use the best way to start your full stack app real quick, create T3 app. Make sure you check it out if you haven't already at create.t3.gg. Help us keep that star count going. We just broke 10K and I wanna go way further than that. The devs have been working way too hard on create T3 app to not see this project blow up. And I do firmly believe it's the best way to build your full stack applications. So we're gonna create a new one. We'll call this a V10 demo, obviously TypeScript. We'll enable all the things, we'll init it. And in just a moment, since I'm not using PNPM, there's no caching and this is all fresh downloads. We're done, V10 demo, open this up. And I wanna show you the magic of V10. So here is a TRPC query, trpc.example.hello.use query. This is making a call to our backend for the API hello on the router example, and it is passing it this input text. Where does this all come from though? Well, if I right click hello and click go to definition, here is the code that runs on the back end. I have this in a folder named server and in, tier, in create T3 app, anything in the server folder runs on server and everything else you should assume runs on client. So in here in the server folder, we have this router with this public hello procedure that takes in an input with text string that can be null and it returns hello input.txt or world if it doesn't have input.txt. If I change this from text to message, you'll see we immediately get an error obviously here because this has to be message now, but we're also getting an error on the client because this expects that to be message. I haven't even saved the change, but I don't have to save the change because the type safety exists within the TypeScript server, which exists in VS Code outside of your file save. So the change here is being staged and seen by this before I save. There is no code gen. There is no hidden step. This is just using TRPC in the default configuration. So I now can change this to message and it's good. Even cooler, I can right click where is rename symbol. 
and I can change this back to text. And since this is a reference to that type definition, it will automatically change here as well. I can rename this to get message and that will automatically change it here as well. All of your API endpoints are fully type safe, contracted. Building a new one is super simple. Let's do a new, actually we'll build the mutation. We'll make this even harder for us. Let's do a uh, remove post. And we want this to be a public procedure that has an input, z.object id z.string and this has a mutation on it which has input return null for now but here's a mutation that has input dot string or input dot id which is the input and if i wanted to delete this we actually return the prisma context in trpc or in um the context for create t3 app so whenever you're doing a mutation or a query you have direct access to prisma so i can const result equals context.prisma, and this will autocomplete based on my database. So I can dot example dot delete where ID is input.id. And now I have this result, which is not useful because it's not async. So I'll make the function async. We will await this. And now I have a result, which is the example that was deleted. I can have deleted result, ta-da. And now with almost no effort, I have defined a new endpoint that has a mutation on it that I can call with an ID and it will delete that thing. So if I have posts in here, which I think I do by default, uh, do we actually show all of the posts? No, we don't. So if I have a bunch of posts that I'm getting from get all here, I'll just write this out. I'll make a new component. Const posts list equals return div. So now we need the data. Const data equals trpc dot example dot Notice how it all auto completes. Oh, this is dot use query. And now we have the data. If no data, return div loading. And now we know we have data at this point. So what I can do, data dot, and this will auto complete dot map post. Cool. Uh, what is this mad about? Does post not have a title? Oh, I need to wrap this, I think. Oh, I know what I'm missing. I'm stupid. Cool. And post doesn't have a title. So here I'll type post dot and it auto completes with all the different values that post has. Are we not selecting all of them or does it just have nothing else? It just has nothing else in it. That makes sense. But we all have, but we have post.id. I'll just show that here. Let's say we want this to be deletable. Button on click equals, we're gonna need to do something. But right now it doesn't have to. It's gonna be mad because it doesn't. But we're gonna add mutate equals trpc dot example dot remove post dot use mutation. And now mutate post dot id. This is mad because post.id is what I pass. I've just passed id post.id as the input. And now this should be good because I'm passing it the variable with id string. If I change this in here from id to be post id, we'll get our type error here because this needs post id. And now I have a button that when clicked will call this backend code that deletes this. Also, I renamed that the wrong place. This is post id here and it would be post there too. Ta-da, that's it. Full stack development, never been easier and more type safe. I am genuinely so hyped that at any point, if I see a query or a mutation, I wanna know what it does. All I have to do is right click and go to definition. And now I'm in the backend code that actually processes that request. If your front end and backend code can both be TypeScript and be in the same repo, this is unbeatable. This is the fastest you can move with full stack type safety without compromising your data loading patterns in a way that isn't super specific to the tech stack you're using. Things like Remix have some of this, but it does not have this powerful of a mutation primitive. That's for sure. Solid Start is getting kind of close to some of what they're building. But if you want a framework agnostic, type safe solution in TypeScript for this type of thing, TRPC is unbeaten, so powerful. So we've seen the new procedures that we can generate. We've seen the new syntax. We've seen the magic of go-to definition but we're already using V9 for a project. How do I migrate to V10? That looks like the syntax is entirely different. I'm gonna have to rewrite everything. Yeah, I did that rewrite actually, and I wish I didn't do it so early because man, they made it a lot easier for everyone else. There's two things that will make adopting V10 much easier. The first one is the interop flag, which lets you use a V9 router in a V10 router so you can still fall back on the old way of doing things until you finish migrating. Or, there's a really big fun or, Sachin made a code mod that will migrate most of your V9 code to V10. It will read your code, make changes, and spit out V10 code, and throw a few errors letting you know what it couldn't change for various reasons. And from there, 
you're now in a place where you can move much faster. There's actually a really cool PR on uh, the Calcom GitHub that Julius did, where he ported Cal.com, which was using TRPC v9, over to TRPC v10. A lot of this was taking advantage of the code mod that did a lot of the work. And then from there, he went and made the handful of additional changes. It's a pile of commits because he had to do a lot of random stuff. Yeah, front end one, front end two, random formatting changes, fixing inference stuff, fixing test stuff, and it was done. And he was able to successfully migrate a gigantic project. Cal.com is massive. And you could fully migrate the thing himself in not too much time. He said it only took him a few hours, which is massive. The amount of work that Sachin put in for this code mod, for it to only be sitting here with 33 stars is insulting. So make sure this one gets some love. Yeah, this is a huge release. I've never seen a project like TRPC take the the migration story so seriously. It's incredible to see that they've put the work they've put in here to make your migration story and make your experience as a TRPC developer incredible. And that really is what TRPC is focused on from day one, is the best possible developer experience. And I'm so proud of what the team has made. Alex is killing it. Sachin's killing it. Trash is killing it. Julius is killing it. And all of the people I'm forgetting to list right now are as well. TRPC v10 is a massive new release that makes full stack development better than it's ever been. If you haven't already tried it yet, please give it a shot. The best way to get started is with Create T3 app, create.t3.gg. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you like this type of newsy update video because it's a bit behind. I know I'm late on this one, but yeah, I think these are cool. I want to let you all know about the things that are hyping me up. Let me know if you agree. Take a look at whatever video YouTube's telling you to check out there. Subscribe if you haven't for some reason, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks again, nerds. Peace.